Right lads, this is exciting. We are about to find out the results of the affair scandal. Oh. Let's do it. Several days had passed since I ordered the investigation into my secretary, Livia Suno. Both Peter and Livia had been acting unnaturally nice to me. Believing I had let them off the hook for their affair, they seemed to be avoiding each other in the hallways though. I was just settling in behind my desk when Lucian knocked on my door. Sir, a moment of your time. Of course. Lucian entered my office and closed the door behind him. Our security team travelled to Lashavan to speak to the owners of the pub Miss Suno named. They confirmed that one Livia Suno had worked for there. Sorry, had worked there, okay. The description of her did not match that of your secretary. Oh shit. However, it did match that of an unidentified corpse that washed up in Lenkirk Bay two months before your inauguration. This is brutal. If that was Livia Suno, who was the woman working for me? Further investigation by our operatives in Roomberg matched Miss Suno's description to a woman named La Elana Vance, last seen graduating from Crim's Rad Political Sciences Institute. Our whistleblower from Roomberg recognised the name Vance as belonging to a deeply embedded covert agent although he had previously assumed it was a man. Fucking hell. How could we have missed all this? How could we have missed all this? As mentioned, Miss Suna was hired without a background check. It's possible this all could have been avoided had any of Mr. Vecturn's blood flow been directed to his brain when he selected her. Oh, oh my god. Bloody hell, Lucian, that's brutal. It's right, though, if he wasn't thinking it was dick. But none of that can be helped now. The question is, what are you going to do, sir? I've got to arrest her for treason, of course. That would be standard procedure. However, if we do so, it's only a matter of time before the media pieces together what happened. I'll look a fool for having her under my nose this entire time. What if there was no trial? There's gotta be a trial. I look like a fool. That's why you must let Mr. Vector take the fall. I know his actions were problematic. This is my fault as much as his. I know his actions were problematic. Problematic is an understatement. Mr. Vector put you in danger by failing to order a background check on your closest personal staff. He betrayed your confidence to a woman with whom he was committing adultery. Anton, would you do the same to your so-called best friend? I asked, no. No, I wouldn't. Lucian sighed. I am your chief strategist. I have advised you on what I believe is the best strategy, but of course, the ultimate decision is yours. Peter is going to be our scapegoat. I will shoulder the blame along with him. I blame Livia, I mean Ilana, and nobody else. This is tricky. While it might be easy to use Peter as a scapegoat, as soon as this gets out, I am going to look like an idiot. I'm going to look incompetent. Um, but what people absolutely love is the ability to re realise your mistakes. That's why all of the, I know that sounds stupid, this is why all of the best superheroes all have a negative to their personality or backstory or something. Always something that they can improve on and get past. Nobody wants, nobody cheers for anyone that's perfect. Or people hate people that always try to push the blame aside. I'm going to shoulder the blame along with him. Lucian looked as if he was about to object one last time, but instead smiled thinly. Very well. I shall write a statement for you to read at the press conference. I'll leave you to handle Miss Vance. Thank you. Lucian nodded and walked out. I called Carl Greaser from my desk and explained the situation. 
After a few minutes, I rang for Livia. She entered my office. Is there something you need, Mr. President? You tell me, Alana. A barely perceptible flash of fear crossed her face. It's true. This is why it's nice whenever you're confronting someone with something, it's always nice to, not all the time, but you've got to confront them with some tangible evidence and watch their reaction. That's unmistakable. Livia, sir, my name is Livia. I nodded towards my office doorway. Carl Greaser was standing there along with two of his guards blocking the entrance. Elana Vance, you are under arrest of sup on suspicion of treason. Please come with me. Her eyes darted around the room. What the hell is going on, Mr. President? Have you let Lucian get to your head? I thought you were smarter than that. You're gonna pay for your lies, Alana. Carl's men grabbed her arms and began dragging her out. No, no, you can't do this to me. Peter, hearing her cries, rushed out of his office. Liv, what the hell? Anton, what's going on? Her name's Alana, Lucian was right about her. She's a spy. No, that can't be true. Can it live? I won't say another word without a lawyer present. She looked at Peter square in the eye. You're a sad old drunk and a lousy lay. Oh my god. She's going out fighting. She's wants to, she just wants to take everyone down. Honestly, if I were a Roomberg spy, I'd barely have to do a thing. You two have swordland ripe for the taking. She straightened up ran a hand through her curls and allowed Carl to lead her away. Peter sank to the floor in front of me. I invited him in to share a drink. We were going to get through this together, just like always. Bloody Nora, man. Press release for the affair scandal. Right. Let's see how this goes down. This could go down like a bag of bricks. It was the morning of Olivia's trial, and the hordes of reporters were gathered in front of the state courthouse. Peter, Lucian and I stood by the entrance. Lucian had helped break the news of my secretary's arrest. Now the media was beginning to question exactly how a Roomberg double agent had been able to inf 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 infiltrate the Maroon Palace. It was time for me to deliver an explanation. The podium with a bank of microphones awaited us on the courthouse steps. Peter looked uncertain. I had told him I would be doing all the talking today. You're on your own, Mr. President. I'd advise you to keep your response as brief as possible. I nodded. Peter took a deep breath. Together we stepped behind the podium. The reporters clustered around us and started shouting questions. Thank you for coming. As you are aware, Libya Suno, former secretary to the President of Swordland, is currently being tried for treason. As you are aware, Erlana Vance, the Roomberg spy who poses my secretary, is currently on try for treason. Right, which one sounds better? As you're aware, Lin Livia Suno, former Secretary of President of Sodland, is currently being tried for treason. Rest assured, the traitor shall be brought to justice. Rest assured, the traitor shall be brought to justice. However, the fact remains that she should never have been allowed to infiltrate our administration in the first place. However, the fact remains she should never have been allowed to access sensitive government information. We are not saying that. Yeah, we, she should n not have been allowed to infiltrate our administration in the first place. That she was able to do so is solely due to carelessness on the part of myself and Vice President Peter Vectern. That she was able to do so is solely due to carelessness on the behalf of myself and Vice President Peter Vectern. The journalist gasps and murmured. Peter turned to face me, his mouth hanging open. In, f in fallen victim to seduction. In his impulsive hiring practices, Mr. Vectern displayed a lapse in judgement, but as your president, I bear the brunt of the responsibility. I have failed in my duty to keep this country safe and secure. I hope I can regain your trust. 
I failed to notice the enemy that was right under my nose. I hope I can regain your trust. No, this isn't right. Sweat was beating on Peter's brow. He grabbed the closest microphone. Please don't listen to President Rain. It is all my fault. I was drunk and reckless. I broke my marriage vows. My selfishness comprised, compromised the Rain administration and all of Swordland. Tears began streaming down his face. I've been a sorry excuse for a husband and a terrible vice president. I resign. The crowd became even louder. I turned away from the microphone and looked at Peter. Thank you. I owe you this much after what I did. The reporters were now waving for us. One woman in the front row looked particularly insistent. Mr. Vecturn. Nah, I will be answering all questions on the vice president's behalf. President Rain, was Mr. Vecton implying that he, he and the covert agent posing as President Rain's secretary were engaged in intimate relations? Yes. We're not lying. Yes. Can you elaborate? <laughs> of course not. Lucian interjected. Neither the President nor the Vice President will be taking any more questions. Thank you. The reporters were reluctantly dispersed. Lucian, Peter and I looked at each other at each other for what seemed like an eternity. Finally, Peter lowered his eyes. I guess I'll go to the palace and start packing my things then. I'll come with you. Thanks, but I need some time alone. I watched him descend the courthouse steps to his car. Mr. Vector certainly made a scene, but it appears that you will make it out unscathed. Of course, there's now a matter of replacing both your secretary and your vice president. Actually, as bad as this sounds, this could work in our favour because this will naturally allow us to fulfil our deal with the... Um, I've actually forgot the guy's name. It's a guy we promised Vice President position for his support. I have a few candidates in mind. Very good, sir. We walked back up the stairs to the courthouse to watch the rest of the trial. Right, let's see how the media received this. Runeberg infiltrated Maroon Palace. President's secretary arrested. Arrested for treason. VP Vector resigns in disgrace. Selection of a new vice president. Briefing on the women's rights situation. Right, tell you what, let's select our new vice president. It was here the day I've been dreading since Peter's resignation. At the entrance to my office, my new secretary, Sylvia, took my hat and coat. Shame Sylvia doesn't have a picture. Get rid of her, I don't even want to look at the bitch. She was a matronly woman in her 40s. She had a spotless background assisting various Maroon Palace officials. Replacing Livia had been easy, but replacing my vice president would be difficult. Thoris law dictated that if a vice president failed to complete his term, new candidates were to be put forward by the members of the cabinet. After much deliberation, the list had been narrowed down to three. Lucian Gallard was the front runner, followed by Gloria Tory, Alban Calvin. This is the guy we promised the position. So we're going to have to see what's going to happen. It was up to me to decide who would fill Peter's shoes. I wanted to chat with them one on one before making my decision. I'd just begun to settle at my desk when I heard a knock at the door. Lucian entered and perched on the chair across from me. Sir. Alright Lucian, you're one hell of a strategist, but why should I make you VP? It is precisely in my capacity as strategist that I have evaluated the experience and capabilities of your potential vice presidents. Objectively, I am by far the most qualified candidate. I would advise you to not only think about our long history together, but also the many crises, the crises I have helped shepherd you through. I won't say much beyond that, I believe my work speaks for itself. You're such a val valuable strategist, I don't know if I can afford to lose you in that capacity. I agree. As Vice President, my ability to serve you in this administration will only increase. Lucian got up from his chair. I expect you'll make the right decision. He left my office. Well, that was short. Just a minute later, there was another knock at the door and Gloria Tory came in. Mr. President, I must say I was not surprised at all when my name was put forward. So Gloria, tell me why I should pick you. 
To put it simply, what I bring to the table is years of experience. I have been a member of the Assembly for almost 20 years and I spend 7 years as its speaker. This alone speaks for itself. As you know, I am also the leader of the Conservative wing of the party. You can see what I'm getting at. Tell me, what are you getting at? Well, I will be blunt. Being the leader of the Conservative wing means that if I am the Vice President, we would have more votes. This would allow us to pass bills far more easily, especially if those bills are aligned to my bloc's causes. Hmm. We are already aligned though. Then that makes things easier, doesn't it? I want you to know that I value order over everything else, Mr. President. Being the Speaker of the Assembly requires principles, nerves of steel and determination to uphold proper conduct. You can expect to see the same of my Vice Presidency. You being a woman could also prove advantageous. Not just any woman, a strong woman who was able to protect order in a room full of unruly men for seven years. Think about the message it would send. The first woman vice president of Swordland? No, the first woman vice president in the whole continent. What support you would lose among traditionalists, you would gain tenfold among the Swordish women. There is much to gain from selecting me, Mr. President. I believe you'll make the right choice. That'll be all for now, thank you. Thank you. I wish you a nice day, Mr. President. Now, I am weighing this up. I, I, so far, I don't know about... Um, bloody hell, I forgot his name already. I don't know the first guy's name. Anyway... Um, Gloria Tory, don't get me wrong, she can get us more votes. I think I've already got most of the Conservative vote anyway. This isn't going to be that beneficial to me. Women's rights? I've already got that covered, mate. I don't think she's a strong candidate. Gloria made her way out. A minute later, there was another knock at the door. This time it was for Alban Calvin. Greetings, Mr. President. It's a great honour to have been chosen as a candidate. Really terrific. <laughs> Let's see if this guy remembers the deal. As I do. It certainly is. I hope to satisfy the requirements of this sacred position. As you know, I represent the reformist wing of the party. Now, this is why. I think this guy's a strong candidate because the reformist wing of the party is the hardest party for me to crack because they're so full of shit. They don't like my policies or anything. That's why. I need someone in power to control them. What Sodom needs today is not only to catch up to more modern neighbours, but to surpass them. I believe we can do that, no I am sure. However, this will only be possible if we set aside our differences and unite as one, and that's what I've been getting at. This is the outlook I wish to bring to the position of Vice President, so that Sodom can excel and soar to new heights. Very idealistic, I like it. Thank you. The fact is, if I am Vice President, reformist members of our party will be more likely to support you in your causes. Yeah, this is, this is, we have trouble with the reformist members. This will smooth the passage of bills and help move our administration and our country toward forward in record time. That makes sense. What this country needs is more dynamic, youthful leadership. Look at you, President Rain. You became the youngest member of the Assembly and completely rejuvenated Swordish politics. I want to do the same. We need to be able to take risks to make gains, and that is only possible with a forward-looking perspective. Not that you might have forgotten, but I would also like to remind you what you promised so he has remembered. Promised me a position in exchange for my support at the Assembly. Yeah. I am a man of my word. I always took you for a man of honour. I trust your judgement. That'll be all for now, thank you. Thank you, Mr President. Alban got up and left. I leaned back in my chair, thinking about the pros and cons of each of my vice presidential candidates. I could almost hear Peter's voice in my head, laughing at the absurdity of my situation. But of course, he wasn't there. 
Right, we've got to make our selection. Let's do it. So, I've already chose. I know what I'm going to do. I am picking Albin. I'm not picking Lucian because he is an excellent uh, he, he's already perfect in the position he's in I don't want to risk losing someone of that caliber from that position and getting someone else shit it, it's it's too risky Gloria I don't think Gloria adds anything she's she's only playing to my strengths and it's not my strength that's going to get us to win an election it's bringing up my weaknesses by picking Albin that's going to pick my weaknesses up and I'm going to have Fingers crossed, I'm going to have support from across the board as well as obviously making good on my deal to him because if I don't make good my deal on him, that's going to severely affect our votes because he's going to sabotage it. We're picking Alban. Right, now let's do the briefing on the women's rights situation. I was sitting in my office, I looked at the clock. 2.26pm, it was almost time for my appointment with Sierra on women's rights. There was a knock at the door. Sierra entered the room with folders in her hand. The door did not close behind her. Monica entered the room and stood next to Sierra. Mr. President, Anton, before we start, I just wanted to thank you for agreeing to this meeting. I've been dreaming about this ever since I volunteered with the Swordless League of Women. I can't believe the moment's finally here. Anything to make you happy. <laughs> Imagine if I said that. Um, I think both of you together could finally bring change to Swordland. I hope you're right. Sierra sat down on a chair and laid down the folder she was holding. First off, Mr. President, I wish to thank you for pushing the decree on establishing gender equality in education. You know it's something I've been trying to accomplish since my appointment as minister. The situation in the public schools was disturbing for me. With that said, we still have a long way to go before Swordish women are able to enjoy the same rights and privileges as men. Or even as their counterparts in Arcasia and United Contana. We have been lagging behind on this for decades, Anton. And this isn't only a moral issue. I've seen enough revolutions in this world to understand the main driver for any change. Money. She flipped open a folder and started pulling out documents. In United Contana, law dictates that women earn the same wages as men in their respective fields. My research shows that this led to a 15.5% increase in productivity. You could say it had a direct influence on their superpower status. Arcasia passed laws ensuring maternity leave rights, child daycare centres and tax deductions for working families. In turn, they experienced a 12.6% productivity boost in the flourishing economy. Both countries also have significantly lower infant mortality rates, a statistic I believe is directly linked to the improved status of women. Our administration has successfully managed to pull Sordland back from the brink of economic ruin. She leaned back in her chair. So I am asking, why stop there? Why not improve our economy and modernise our society at the same time? It's only logical. Monica handed me the documents. It had, it had a list of bullet points on it. The two of us talked it over and there are the measures we believe are most urgently needed. I let my eyes wander down the list. Criminalising domestic violence. I shouldn't have to tell you how crucial this is. It is utterly unbelievable that in this day and age, Swordish men are legally allowed to beat their wives. What the hell? What the fuck? Is that the truth? I agree, it's a travesty. I'm happy we're on the same page. As in this incidents are especially high within the Bluedish communities, I would also advocate for setting up a special domestic violence task force in collaboration with Bluedish women's rights organisations. Monica looked at her strangely. Are you sure that's something we ought to focus on? The Bloods are different. They have their own rules. Yeah, I'm sorry, not in this country they don't. Monica, I am surprised at you. We can't let women suffer under the patriarchy no matter their ethnicity. Yeah, I agree. The Bloods must conform to Swordish law. We can discuss the particulars once the law has passed. Support for working mothers. Sierra nodded. It simply isn't fair that women in the workforce are punished for having children. Remember what I told you about Janice, my friend who basically got fired for becoming pregnant. That would never happen to a man. Paid maternity leave and state subsidised daycare centres would be key to keeping more mothers employed. It's 
true, having children never hindered my career prospect, it shouldn't hinder a woman either. Exactly. Moving on. Equal treatment in the workforce. It's an easy one. Right now, Sodland has one of the continent's largest pay gaps between men and women. We need legislation ensuring that a woman doing the same job as a man is paid the same wage. We would also introduce quotas to get more women into positions of power. In the assembly, for instance, or on the boards of corporations, I disagree. Eventually, narrowing the pay gap is far more pressing issue, as it would bring financial independence to countless lower income women. Sierra, we never talked about this, but I always thought that with more women in power, higher status for all women would naturally follow. It's so not true. Women are starving because they don't make a living wage. That's a damn sight more important than your friend Jane being passed over for a promotion. Quotas are a terrible idea. People should be hired on merit, not simply because of their sex. Monica and Sierra looked at me strangely. Men are hired on the basis of their sex all the time, just not consciously. Exactly so we eliminate that consciousness but we can't go on the flip side. It That's not equality. There are more than enough qualified women to fill any position you can think of. It's up to us to give them the opportunity. That covers all subjects. What are your thoughts so far? I think they've made a good case for all of these changes. Thank you. If we can pull this off before the elections, the Reign administration will make history. Let's talk about how to proceed. I want to establish a commission for women's rights in Sordland with me as its head. Our goal should be passing and implementing a set of laws to solve the problems we just discussed. As the commission's spokeswoman, my responsibility will be to make speeches and organise fundraisers. I will be the face of this movement while Sierra handles the groundwork. If I can show that the first lady is behind the movement, many women will feel encouraged. Sierra gestured down at her outfit, especially those who aren't keen on pantsuits. The organisation's name will be the Commission on the Status of Women. What do you need the commission for? I'll run your laws past the assembly. Even if that's successful, you'll still need for the commission to ensure the laws are successfully implemented and convince the public the changes will be beneficial. One more thing to consider before making your decision. This could help silence any of the public lingering questions regarding your former vice president and the Livia Suno affair. That is a valid point. You have the chance to be a hero. Think about Dina and her future. I hope you'll make the right decision. They rose from their seats expectantly. I took a few minutes to think. I will approve the creation of the com commission and support your bill in the assembly. Great, amazing, you won't regret this Mr President. I fucking better not mate, I better not, I better not regret this. Monica turned to her. That's all the excitement you can muster? You did it, we did it. Monica hugged Sierra, she looked uncomfortable. We still have a long way to go, I'll start gathering names for the commission tonight. Sierra started collecting her documents. She and Monica headed towards the door. Monica paused before leaving. I love you Anton. I'll see you at home. I could hear Monica and Sierra talking excitedly at each, at each other as the door closed behind them. I looked out of my window over the city of Holsord. It was a clear day outside. Hey, we are making rapid project in a short space of time. It's, it was quite slow at the start. Our economy dropped, wasn't looking very well, but all of our proposed changes have taken effect. Sordish League of Women Donation The most influential women rights NGO, the Sordish League of Women, is organising a massive fundraising campaign to raise awareness in Sordish society and has reached out to us personally for private donations. Go on then. I'm feeling flush because everything's going well. I've got one wealth. Let's donate. Rain makes donation to Sordish League of Women. Will policies follow? Well, they are about to. Start the day at the palace. Lucian and I were on our way to my office. I was holding a mug of coffee in one hand and a folder of various documents in the other. As we turned the corner, Lucian spoke. The Ashcraft anniversary is coming up soon. The most important day for the Blue Dish populace. 
Watani Ashcraft is one of their symbols as you know. Your presence at this event would show your desire for a more unified Swordland. We will reap the benefits if you decide to go, I'm sure. Why should I attend the Bloodish anniversary? It will send a clear message to the Bloodish. Your president is with you. This will alleviate tensions. We rounded another corner to reach the last corridor leading to my office. Lucian suddenly stopped in front of the doors. The plot that once said Vice President Peter Vecturn had been removed. The door was halfway open and I could see a few workers moving boxes around the room. One of them saw us, bowed his head and changed the name tag on the door to Vice President Alvin Calvin. I heard Alvin's voice from inside. You can leave it there, thank you. He noticed us and immediately made his way to us. Mr. President, Lucian. That is Mr. Gallard to you, Mr. Vice President. Very well, Mr. Gallard. How's it going? Are you settled in yet? Getting there, Mr. President. That reminds me. Mr. Gallard, please deliver this to my secretary. This needs to be in the hands of the Justice Committee as soon as possible. Lucian's upper lip curled. He and Alban stared at each other down for a moment. I am not your servant, Mr. Calvin. True, but I am your superior, Lucian. Ooh, there's tensions already. That's not good. Right, let's... Let's get this situation reeled in. We work with requests here, Mr. Calvin, not orders. Then I request, Mr. Gallard, could you please deliver this to my secretary, please? Fine, I'll take it. I will see you later, Mr. President. For the Ashcroft matter, I will present you with our options later. He walked out, leaving me alone with Alban. Well then, I must get back to tidying up his room. Thank you for visiting, Mr. President. I will stop by as soon as this is done. I want you to try and get along with Lucian. I will do my best. Alban bowed and went into his room. I entered my office and asked Sylvia for a second cup of coffee to wake me up. Another long day was awaiting me. Alban Calvin is the Vice President. Mediation of a dispute in Grenda Marie. Genda Marie. Okay, so from what I from what I vaguely remember, um, the woman, the old woman, um, Lilius, I think, asked me for something regarding the Grenda Marie, and it, it, it's between her and oh, there we go, I ISF and Lilius, Lilius is the girl. I arrived in the city of Vesord with my new vice president, Alban, after receiving an emergency meeting request from Iosif and Lilius. I had seen the reports of a recent issue that rose between the Swordish police forces and the Grendamarie units at the city. The report said that an operation against a drug trafficking gang in Vesord failed due to miscommunication. It was not hard to guess what this meeting was going to be about. We entered the city hall and made our way to the second floor. I could hear Iosef and Lilius voices echoing through the hall. I opened the doors to the meeting room. The two ministers did not even realise. Iosef Lancia, this is unacceptable. How dare the police meddle in the affairs of the Genda Marie? It was you. It was your men who started this ridiculousness and meddled with an ongoing police investigation. Their voices were getting louder and louder. Rural security is my jurisdiction and your men were way outside of Vesord. We are here to help with the matter. What's going on? Mr. President, Mr. Cla Mr. Vice President. Apologies, but Ms. Graffia fails to understand her place. No, Mr. Lancia, you are the one who does not un understand his place. If you continue to do so, you will pay for it one day. Ooh, fight and talk from Lilius. That's enough. Calm down, both of you. I'm trying really hard to stay calm, Mr. President. Ms. Graff, you are pushing your boundaries. Isaf, let's hear your side of the story. The Lieutenant General of the Grendamarie, Gendamarie, was tracking a drug trafficking ring in the countryside of Vesord. We immediately acted on it. Just when we were about to raid their hideout with live weapons, the police units arrived in the scene and alerted the criminals. Well, that sounds fucking stupid, doesn't it? As a result, criminals got away. Isn't there a line of communication between you? 
There is, but the Minister of Defence decided to avoid notifying the police department about the planned raid. But hold on. Hold on. Uh, it was your men who started this ridiculousness and meddled with an ongoing police investigation. So if that's the case, why wasn't you aware of that? Yeah, you knew about the gang and their stash in the countryside and she's just confirmed it. I started tapping on the table with my fingers. How do we solve this issue so that it never happens again? I think this was the last drop. Internal security matters should be handled to Ministry of Interior completely. We are called the Ministry of Interior for a reason. We can't let any more screw-ups like this happen again. She looked at me. I want the Grande Marie to be transferred to the Ministry of the Interior. That's right, that's what she originally asked for. I remember that. What? Woman, are you out of your mind? Ice have turned red with anger. He composed himself after a moment. To me, what needs to change is not the structure itself, but the problems in it. We need to find out what's causing this and fix it. Alban's got a point. I believe I just told you the fix to the problem, Mr. Calvin. Please address me as Mr. Vice President, Miss Graff. I simply don't think the end justifies the means in this case. This is not an individual case. This has been happening for a long time in case you did not know, Mr. Calvin. She refuses to acknowledge him as Mr. President. She's out of line here. Ridiculous. This is absolutely ridiculous. I won't hand over the Gundamarie to her. Out of the question. Do you have a better solution, Isaf? Whenever operations overlap, we should engage at lower rank with the local officers on both sides. We could work on establishing that, but it still doesn't change the wrong system that exists now. I want to remind you about your promise, Mr. President. Yeah, well, I, I did say she could have it, but this is... That was before this screw up. That was before this screw up. That is not how promises work, Mr. President. Well, I think it is. I think it is. Because I've only promised you that. Because you said you were doing a good job. When you fucked that up, aren't you? What promise? Now I see what's going on here. Enlighten us. What is going on, Isaf? Lilius set us up to create this incident. Lilius bit her lips. Oh. Really? Now normally, when someone bites their lip, or brings their lips in together, not all the time, but it can mean that they're, they're, they're stopping themselves from saying something. Instead of outright denying it. Ooh, you dirty little rat. That is going a bit too far. What proof do you have? Alban coming in with the, the diplomacy. There is no way that the police has arrived at the right time of a month long search on the exact date and minute of the Gendarmerie raid. That does seem a bit of a coincidence. You may be right. It is very disappointing that you would even entertain the idea, but how about coming up with some facts? This kind of an accusation is unheard of. It's nonsense. If I were you, I wouldn't believe a word Mr. Lancia says, Mr. President. Heed my word, Mr. President. When dealing with these situations, you need to always look at who gets what out of it. That I can agree with. I won't stand idle by these utterly ridiculous and baseless accusations. I don't have time for this. What is your decision? Well, I think um, I can't possibly hand it over to you. I don't trust you. There will be no change related to the Gendarmerie operations. You're making a mistake. Disappointing, here I thought Anton Rain was a man of his word. Thank you for protecting the structure and authority of the Ministry of Defence. From now on work together and don't fight amongst each other. I want capable and effective members of this cabinet. We will do our best, right Mr Lancia? That's right Miss Graff. 
I left the room and attended my next scheduled meeting. No. Listen, no, wait, listen. Who needs, who needs enemies when you've got fucking friends? These are supposed to be like members of like my, these, this is my country. And these are the inter internal struggles that you face? Jesus. Jesus Christ. Briefing on the current healthcare situation. This should be good the amount of funding I've pumped into it. I had a meeting scheduled with Pascal to receive the annual healthcare report. He arrived at my office with stacks of papers underneath both arms. Mr. President. He put the mountain of papers on my desk and made a loud thud sound. I know this seems like a lot. Reviving it should make more take more than a day. He measured the pile again. Or maybe two. Very well. Thanks for bringing these in. No problem at all. They contain very important information about the status of our healthcare. Salaries, spending, hospital reports, whatever you like. We can go through this together. Can you just summarise it? Of course. I breathed a sigh of relief as he put the reading glasses on to look at a document he was holding. So we have concluded our report for this year. Thanks to the allocated funds we've improved the healthcare in the country overall. I've used the resources to begin a comprehensive health reform. We have more patients treated, less waiting times and higher treatment quality than the years before. That is great to hear. Thank you for your hard work, Pascal. This wouldn't be possible without your wise decision, Mr. President, so thank you. We are certainly on the right path to challenge even Lesbia or Vogsland in the matter, but we are not there yet. However, give it a few more years and we might even surpass them. No, Pascal, we will surpass them. Yes, we will. Moving on. Pascal skimmed the rest of the document before putting it down. The investments were poured into our rural health facilities has paid off greatly. Excellent. The quality of care increased due to the upgraded equipment and we were able to hire more staff for the healthcare. Excellent. The people in the countryside deserve better healthcare services. Inequality is our worst enemy and we are one step closer to beating it. The disparity in services needs more effort to be completely solved however. The additional funds for the rural areas are a great start. All these efforts have resulted in clear increase in quality and health services provided to our citizens. He cleared his throat. Now that I have given you the short summary, there is a very important matter to discuss. Okay, what is it? Confidential. Pascal opened the package and brought out a few documents. He handed them over to me. Take a look. It was a report from the Ministry of Health. Each page has a stamp on it that read, For President's Eyes Only. The report was titled Polio Outbreak in Persia. How bad is it? But now it seems under control we have put a few villages under quarantine. The total number of infected are currently 1467. Fuck. Death toll is at 23 so far. Now this is weird. this is funny because last time we heard about this quite a while ago. The infection was only 23. Now the infections 1467 and 23 are dead. If we have more outbreaks, the results will be terrible. Thankfully, we have received the additional funding to our healthcare. This should curb the infection ratio, although I am afraid even that might not be enough. This is a very serious matter, Mr. President. Lives of Swordish citizens are even at stake. I will do whatever it takes to eliminate this threat. With that attitude, I have no doubt we will succeed in that. We have done our research. There is a cure, a vaccination we recently invented in the United Contana by a doctor and the formula has been made available for free in the entire world. No matter what people think about the United Contana, if the same thing happened in Arcasia, we would be paying a price for it. Yeah, I see what you mean about that. Privatised healthcare, government regulated healthcare. Thanks for the very good decision made by you to increase the funding for our healthcare. We have the capability to produce this vaccine locally. But I'm afraid simply having the vaccine won't help. We need to make sure they are administered. We need to implement a nationwide mandatory polio vac vaccination policy. With your order, I can get immediately to work to ensure we are doing whatever it takes. This might seem excessive, however, it is absolutely necessary. Whatever it takes to protect Swordland, do it. Do it. Excellent. Now, if you'll excuse me, I must get to work immediately. He got it from his seat. Thank you for your time, Mr. President. He left my office, leaving me alone with a lot of paperwork to go through. Cheers, mate.
protests against gender equality in education. Soros housewives have turned out in record numbers to protest the presidential decree ordering gender equality in education. What? See, this is this not the exact reason we need gender equality in education? Because look, these women are proving themselves Soros housewives that they're fucking morons. Most of the demonstrations appear to be centred in Enrique, with Mayor Curtin Lest's administration providing the protesters with permits and the security staff. Fools! See, this is how you can lead a horse to water, but you can't make them drink it. Read the report from Uzrian. Rural Education Institute opened. The first dozen rural education institu institutes have opened in the countryside of Uzrian, and many villagers were invited to attend the first classes to prepare them for the theoretical and technical knowledge necessary to improve agriculture, increase literacy and educational knowledge of citizenry. Good stuff. Fair Trade Commission established. Excellent. The Fair Trade Commission has opened in Hulsor today and began coordinating coordinate with the Central Bank, the National Business Council and the Ministry of Economy to set up an anal analysis of the competition issues and potential regulation legislation. Effort to bring fairness to trade and commerce in Sordland is led by a visionary small business owner who sued Heart of Sordland in an unfair competition bid and won in court. Excellent. Excellent. Right, let's discuss healthcare spending. There is a significant budget left in the Ministry of Health that we can spend on several different programs in order to improve healthcare in Swordland further. Funds could be used to create a medical scholarship, build a state-of-the-art medical school, give free eye tests or dental care. Okay, so this because of the budget that I've already spent. This shouldn't cost us, but if we don't spend it, we do get plus one. Okay, well. Start medical scholarship. I like the sound of that. Build a state-of-the-art medical school. Now, the thing is, as much as a state-of-the-art medical school is beneficial, a medical scholarship to get more people in the medic field is much more essential for quality quality healthcare I'm going to do the medical scholarship it's going to improve our economy as well it's going to get a lot of people into the field happy days new medical scholarship program um Created with the assistance of the president to give opportunities for exceptional students at the best medical schools. That is great, yeah. The program will raise thousands of talented doctors, nurses and dentists in the workforce in the future. The massive funds set aside was highly praised by Minister Pascal Benoit. And that's what I wanted to get out of it. More doctors and nation doctors and nations. More doctors and nurses for our entire nation. Support the Ashcraft anniversary. Oh, this is the bluish thing, isn't it? The Remembrance Rally of the Ashcraft anniversary is about to begin in Erzurum. The bluish movement is holding their largest rally yet to display their demands and strength. The administration can go to Erzurum to support the event with or without an armed convoy or not attend at all. I think I am going to attend. Let's just keep it as peaceful as possible. We're going to attend without the convoy. Solidarity for Watani Ashcraft's anniversary. After making a stop in Daya to meet with Governor of Berger, Felix Braun, we finally arrived in the ancient walled city of Erzurum. More than two decades ago, the city gained particular importance for the Bluish people due to the Izam incident. A bloody protest that occurred in 1933. And the death of Watani Ashcraft. He was a bluish carpenter who was killed by Soros soldiers during his protest against the construction of the Saldam. 
The event took place in the aptly named Izam Square, just several blocks away from the site of the tragic Izam incident, which currently lied under Lake Sol together with the ruins of the sunken city. We drove in the presidential Cadillac as we entered the city's old paved streets between its rundown buildings. Our convoy could barely fit the narrow streets, disrupting local traffic and creating a noisy chaos in this normally tranquil city. The passerby looked upon us with concern as we drove towards the square. I must say this was a good decision sir, this will help ease the tensions. I bloody hope so. If we play our cards right I am certain. We are almost there, I can hear the crowd. I heard the chants and shouting from outside, Lucian leaned in closer from the window, listening to their voices. They are telling us to go back to where we came from, that's not a good start. We approached the large crowd that assembled in the square. There were probably at least 10,000 people, most of them were yelling profanities and obscenities at me. As our convoy slowed down, a young bluish man ran in front of our vehicle and spat on the window. I was looking out from. Don't do anything. Our vehicle came to a stop. My driver exited the vehicle and opened the door for me. We were greeted by Monsoon Lek. He wore a coat over his suit which was marked with red and turquoise stripes of the Bluish Movement's flag. He moved forward to greet us. Welcome to Erzurum, Mr. President. It looks like I'm not welcome here. Shake his hand. We shook hands. Mr. Lek. Mr. Gallard, welcome. Shall we move into the sanctuary then? Let's go. We started making our way to the Erzurum Sanctuary which stood at the end of the square. A much smaller replica of the Ark Sanctuary in Dyer, this building emanated a mystical aura due to its age and its blackened walls. We entered the building through the ornament, ornamented large metal gates. As we walked, the noise of the crowd started to fade out. Everyone started to get quiet for the ceremony. Thousands of candles were burning inside the sanctuary. One for each person that died in Izam. The red candle at the centre was for Watani Ashcraft. Monsoon gestured towards the candles. Pick up a candle. He picked up the candle for Ashcraft and started walking out. Many others followed suit, including us. The atmosphere outside had completely changed. The crowd was now completely silent. We were slowly walked towards Ashcraft's grave. On the way, hundreds of people joined with us. Someone from the crowd shouted at me, breaking the silence. Don't mock the dead, you racist dog. You are defiling that candle in your hands. Keep walking. I ignored the man and kept walking. When we arrived, he pointed at a huge standing torch above the grave. Let's leave the candle. The stone seemed to be too happy with me carrying this. leave the candle. I turned around and realised the sheer amount of people who were following us. They were all looking at me, waiting to hear what I had to say. We, ne we need to bring these people together in unity. My fellow citizens, we are here to mourn Watani Ashcraft and many others who have lost their lives. I am not standing before you today as the President. I'm standing here as one of you. Despite the attempts to divide us, our people will stand as one. We are sword, we are blood, we are united under one flag. I share your hatred and anger, I feel it too. I assure you, like a red hot metal, it takes a long time for it to cool down. But I look at the lost lives and think what would they want? An old man from the crowd yelled revenge. To what end? We need to break this vicious cycle of violence and revenge for a better future. Let me tell you of one thing. I dream of a swordland, a truly united swordland, a country where being a blood or sword does not matter. We are all the same before God. We must always stay together in the face of, in the face of adversity against all odds. I feel responsible and ashamed for the actions of my predecessors. Most of all, I feel the desperation to remove this black mark from our history. Let us be a testament to our unity. Right, let's not put the... I like this bottom one, but I don't want to say innocent people of Izan paid the price. 
It's going to disturb emotional feelings. Let's take the blame. For the actions of our predecessors, most of all I feel a desperation to remove this black mark from our history. I need help from each and every one of you to make this country a better place for everyone. To our unity. There was no reaction from the crowd, oof. Only silence. One man broke the silence and shouted, do not listen to murderers, and threw a tomato which hit the ground right in front of me. You cannot claim that you support us after trying to kill our language. You supported murderer Smolak in his crusade against our people. You denied entry to innocent refugees. You are responsible for the deaths of thousands. Immediately after that, the whole crowd joined in with him. Lucian looked at me worryingly. People started walking closer and closer as they chanted Yolak Bloodrat. Lucian grabbed my shoulder. We must leave now. Only surrounded by my personal guards against a crowd of thousands, we started making our way back to the cars hastily. The convoy started driving away as soon as we were seated. The window of the vehicles were completely covered with vegetables, eggs and dyes when we finally left the city. <sighs> Bloody Nora. Right, that is not how I put well. I knew it wasn't going to go well. But that was... That was absolutely tragic. Ezra and kicks out the president. Right lads, well what I think we will do is, what's next? Briefing on the current political situation, right, what I think we'll do is we'll call it an episode day. When we come back straight away we'll see what the political situation is. Um, I imagine we're going to find out what the consequences of our actions, well not our consequences of our, of our actions, but if anything comes of that meeting, because uh, the British people were not amused. Um, okay lads. I hope you enjoyed the episode and I shall see you in the next one.